Well, good morning. Thank you for joining us on the Milton Garden Path. Today's episode will be about gardening in the winter. If you've got the winter doldrums, it's cold outside, there are still many things that you can do indoors to sort of satisfy your gardening wishes. So we're here today. I have a guest from the Master Gardener Association, Sonia Johansson, Johansson, who is the president of the Master Gardener Association, and we're going to talk about some basic propagation tips. So I hope you learn something new and you enjoy this segment of the show. So now let's talk to Sonia. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Sonia. I've, I've heard you speak before, and Sonia has set up many outdoor classrooms. She's a phenomenal gardener. She does much better with vegetables than I do. And we are going to mention a little bit about basic propagation. So for today's purposes, we're going to talk about seed propagation, stem cuttings, and root cuttings. So any particular one that you want to discuss? I guess why don't we start with seeds, which is... Um you know, that's what the plants do that we get really excited about. It's wintertime, we get to pull out seed catalogs and ogle them and think about all the wonderful plants that we get to get to grow next year. This is when you buy your seeds. So, so when you buy your seeds, what people should probably think about is the time of year and if you're going to be thinking about planting something outdoors, um, can you offer some tips on what to look for and what not to do? Sure. Um, it's a great idea it's perfectly fine to buy hybrid seeds hybrid seeds are all there's nothing wrong with them they're just bread it's like a cock cock what do they call them cockadoodles cockapoo cockapoo like a cock um, a dog a do yeah <laughs> golden doodle um it's just bread between two different plants and they tend to be very, actually very hardy they tend to produce a lot and they often choose for disease resistance. So if you see that in a, in a catalog, it's a fine plant. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, you would want to look for plants that are going to grow inside your growing season. So we're here in New England. We have three really good months to grow, June, July, and August. We have some shoulder season, September, maybe May, depends on what you're growing. So you don't want to pick a 150-day watermelon. Our growing season isn't long enough for that, but they're 80-day watermelons, so uh, you want to look at how long it takes for the plant to grow and make sure you're selecting a seed that does that. Um, and you can look at sun requirements of various seeds. Vegetables basically all need full sun, but different flowers have different requirements. Some of them grow perfectly fine in shade or partial shade, so those are things to look for. Are there certain seeds that you would not start now? I wouldn't start anything now. <laughs> Oh, well, okay. <laughs> um, we're going to do it for the sake of practice, mm -hmm. and uh, we're also going to l look at germination, how well some seeds grow. But most plants will take somewhere between a week and three weeks to germinate, and then they start growing. Uh, that's going to put us into February, and there's not enough sunlight and warmth to put them outside, so they'll be indoors and they'll get very long and stretched out looking. People call that leggy, it's also called etiolated. Plants that become etiolated like that never grow well. So you wanna think about when you are going to put the plant outside in the yard, let's say it's mid-May. You mm -hmm. wanna choose a time that's past frost for many plants. Um, and you don't wanna start it inside more than a couple of weeks before the time you're gonna put it outside. So something that takes three weeks to germinate you might need to start much sooner. Something that takes only five days to germinate, you don't need to start so soon. But you, what you don't want is things growing long and leggy and tall and reaching for that light in your window because they'll never be healthy plants like that. Yeah, I've seen that happen many times. House, house plants do it in the winter too when they're not getting enough light. Oh. Now I've, you, you know, right this time of year is a time of year that all the all the seed catalogs come out. So it sort of gives you that little tease of what's to come um, with flowers and vegetables and all sorts of things. And one of my favorite are dahlias. So this is something that I have started indoors a little earlier than the summer, maybe in March, just mm -hmm. to get it, give it a little head start because our bloom time for dahlias is a little bit shorter than a warmer climate. But um, love this time of year with the with the catalogs and it makes sense to plant dahlias earlier they're not growing from seed they're growing from tubers 
um, and they need to have buds on those tu tubers develop and swell up and grow and get above the soil line. So they take longer perhaps to do that than a seed might take to germinate and it makes sense to start them a little early. Right. So um, another type of propagation is stem cutting and we will do some demonstrating a little bit later with a few different house plants and annuals and um, some forcing. So any type of thing that you like you stay away from or? Well, most plants, if you catch them at the right time of year uh, and you handle them correctly, they will reproduce asexually. You can cut off a piece of the plant and propagate it. It will and place cells on the plant will develop into root structures instead of developing into branches or leaves. They're incredibly plastic that way. So you can you can do that. You can do stem cuttings, which tend to be very easy. You can do leaf cuttings. Some plants will grow leaves directly, sorry, roots directly from the leaves. Um, and those are both really great things to do. Well, we'll have fun a little bit later. We have a couple of middle schoolers here to uh, demonstrate some of these techniques that we'll be offering. Um, some of the basic propagation medium that is recommended is a sterile mixture of equal parts peat moss, perlite, and sand. It could be other things as well. Sure, the things that you're looking for in a potting medium, one is absolutely what you said, sterility. Uh, these seeds and young germinated seeds are very prone to bacterial infection, fungal infection, so you can't just use garden soil. You can, but you'll tend to lose a much higher percentage of seeds because there are bacteria and, and fungi and viruses in the soil. So you'll, get, uh, you'll need to buy sterile soil and it needs to have a lot of air space. So that's why we add things like perlite and vermiculite. They have kind of, not this big, but they have, they're large chunks. You'll be able to see them when we take a look and it creates a lot of airspace, it creates drainage so that the, they get enough oxygen. And that's the biggest reason for having those things in there. So uh, today we'll be doing a Christmas cactus, which is very easy. We'll be doing a um, African violet and a strobilanthus, which is a Persian shield used in the summer for bo window boxes, but this is a good time to start that because you, they might be big and lush when it comes time to planting them outdoors in the spring. Mm -hmm. So, but we'll, we'll put the little kids to, to work today. Um, so we talked about stem cutting. We talked about seed um, and a little bit about root with, well, it's not a root, but the dahlias are tubers. Tubers. And we should be able to have some fun at the work table. So take a walk to the other side of the studio and we'll get to work. Well here we are with our propagation um, materials. So we had talked about the, the sterile medium that you'd want to use which would be a mixture of equal parts perlite, sand, and peat moss. And as you can see in here it's very light and airy but it's sterile and it will be a nice way to anchor the, the cuttings that we have chosen. So first off, we are going to show these well-behaved middle school boys how to propagate um, a Christmas cactus. Christmas cactus is one of the easiest things to root. You could do it in water, you can do it in soil. But today, for today's purposes, we will do it in soil. So boys, okay. I have here two cuttings of Christmas cactus. Why is it called that? That's just the variety of the plant that it I is. I know. Okay. <laughs> so Christmas cactus is called that because this particular species of cactus blooms around our Christmas time. There's actually another one that looks almost exactly like it that blooms at Thanksgiving, and a third one that looks just like this except it has tons of little hairy tufts, and that blooms at Easter. And one of the reasons this is so easy to root, it has these little air roots. So you are going to show us how to... Air roots? Air roots, just... There are little, they're also called adventitious roots. So see this little tiny hair mm -hmm. coming out? That's actually a root. If it gets wet, 
and hydrates and fills up, it will start taking on water and feeding water to the plant. So uh, these kind of cactuses grow in the rainforest and they grow in the crooks of trees where rainwater often collects. And they'll put these little roots down and they might be able to root in a new crook, maybe one branch over. That's what they do with those little roots. So do they have the flow in the xylem? Uh, the roots, yes. No, the, I'm sorry, that's in the stem. The xylem and phloem oh. is in the stem. The roots just absorb water up into them. So one of the things that I brought today is called rooting hormone powder. And the Christmas cactus would not necessarily need this to root because it's root is, it roots quite easily. But for today's purposes, we'll have the boys dip the end of the Christmas cactus in the, hor the hormone powder and then stick it in the stick it in the mixture here. So in front of you, you have a cup with mixture in it and a popsicle stick. So what I'd like you to do is take your little popsicle stick and make a hole. And then take your Christmas cactus and lightly dip it into the hormone powder and then stick it in there. So while they're doing that, um, the hormone powder you can get at uh, most good gardening centers. It uh, has an ingredient called auxin, which is a hormone that causes the cells in the plant to differentiate and turn into roots. Um, many plants will root without that, but it is really like Christmas cactus. Absolutely don't need it, but it is a nice head start for some plants, and it does get it moving faster. The faster they root and start growing, the less likely they are to uh, become subject to fungal infections. And as Sonia mentioned earlier, one of the reasons for taking a cutting is if you're moving, if you have a relative who has a plant that is old and you admire it, you can, if, with their permission, you never want to just take a piece, uh, get a little cutting, bring it home, and root it, and you'll remember that person for a long time. So that was, that's just one simple way of doing the Christmas cactus. Uh, another root cutting that we are going to demonstrate today is an African violet. Who doesn't have an African violet in their home? If you don't, we can give you some pieces. <laughs> so it's, um, I did it earlier in water. So this would be a nice way just to demonstrate how the roots would form. They would start forming there and the, the new leaves would start from this point. But it's the same process. You would stick it in the hormone powder, take um, a piece of foil, a little jar of water, doesn't have to be big, just enough to stop the leaf, puncture it. Do you want to since this is a little too long, you want to cut that? And dip it in the hormone powder and stick it in the water. This would be a nice exercise to do at home with your kids during the winter so they can sort of see uh, the roots as they form. Because another way to propagate the African violet would be the same way that we did with the Christmas cactus, with the rooting powder, stick it in the, the mixture of peat, sand, and um, perlite, and, but you won't be able to see the roots in that one. Um, and if you plant, if you do propagate in, in sterile soil, you don't want to pull it out to check on the roots. You'll disturb the little baby roots and they will break off and the plant will have to start again. So uh, a nice thing about this is the ability to see those roots developing and you're a lot less tempted to do that. But if you, if you plant a cutting in soil, you just it's like not opening the rice cooker. You don't open it, you just let the roots do their thing. And you'll know that it's really starting to develop when you start to see new growth on the top. Yes. So what I like to do, how many of you have annuals that you have in your planters at home during the summer? Then the winter comes and they're, they're, they would die outside. You can bring them inside, but they would be a little leggy. So one of my favorite annuals is this Persian, Persian shield. It's also called strobilanthus. So I'm going to try to make more plants out of this by the method with the hormone powder and stick it in the medium. So, but first you'd want to take off the lower leaves so that th that doesn't interfere. And 
very simply, same, same thing, you could dip it in the rooting powder and stick it in the soil as well. So boys, do you want to try that? Okay. Here's a piece of that. So you could take off the bottom leaves. They can each have an extra. And here's an extra one if you'd like. So let's make a little hole to, uh, and then. So one, with this rooting mixture, you want to have it m wet, but not too wet. So moisten it, because at the end of this, not with the Christmas cactus, but perhaps that one, we would cover it with a baggie, and that would sort of make a little microclimate for it where the moisture would stay in. Another thing that's important to do, or not necessarily, what I like to do is take that popsicle stick and date it so you have a sense of how long it's been growing. So today's date is, it's sometime in January. 17th. Well, today's January 17th, but so you put January 17th on that. Then uh, another thing, if you are going to cover it, you want to cut the leaves so that they're not hitting the plastic. You take a plastic baggie, that's enough. No, you didn't cut this. Okay. So the stick will serve as sort of a way to keep the baggie upright. Keeps in the baggie will keep the moisture in. So then you could take a little rubber band and you have your homegrown little greenhouse. There you go. So hopefully this will take root and you'll get another Persian shield. Christine, what kind of success rates do you have with so I think it's important to say that not everything you propagate is going to succeed. True. Um, well, with certain things like co what, Christmas cactus, ninety-five percent. As Sonia said earlier, <laughs> earlier you could run over it with a car, have the dog eat it, put it in water, and it would probably still root. Well, maybe not that badly, maybe. but um, coleus is one of the easiest things to root. Um, so is a uh, what else? Um, Swedish ivy. Yep. It's easy to root. Some of those soft, softer stemmed plants are quite easy to root. And others, you know, take a long time. Yeah, and woody plants often, if you try to uh, propagate something that's a little bit woody, it, I've read as low as 10% success rate is normal. It's mm -hmm. nothing to be upset about. So you might want to put, if you're trying to propagate something woody, you might want to put 10 or 20 of them in right. to see how many succeed. And when, that's a good point, because earlier last summer, I um, did a propagation um, experiment with several woody trees, but you know, you need the soft tissue for that. And some of them rooted, but don't know if they'll survive the winter. So we've seen some stem cuttings. Nice job, John. We've seen some water propagating and You've got some big seeds down there. Yes. So now we're going to get a little seedy. We were talking dirty before, but now we'll. So I would have invited you over for the guacamole that I made, which was really good. But instead, I'm going to show you the pits. So oh, that's the pits. these are avocado pits, which is also a seed. And one of the easiest things to do is get this to grow. We may never be around to see an avocado, but you'd have a nice little tree. So um, I'm gonna take some toothpicks. Can you hand me some toothpicks, please? Yes, ma'am. And I'm gonna look at the seed to, where the, to see where the seam goes. And the seam is here. So I'm not going to stick the toothpick there, but I'm going to stick it sort of somewhere else and just right into the, right into it. So boys, on the one that Christine's already done, you can see the seam really well. Do you see that line down the center? It won't show up as much on yours because they're a little newer, but hopefully you can find it. So this is one that I started January 5th. And as you can see, it's, it's taking a long time. So all you need is a little jar, water, toothpicks, and the water should really be touching the bottom of it. 
um, but for this demonstration, uh, we just left it a little bit lower. And some patience, because it will take a while to, to, to grow, but it will start by splitting at the top, and then the bottom will split, and you'll see the stem come out and the roots form, and ultimately you'll get a stalk of an avocado. Um, These are really common to find growing in your compost pile, by the way. So if you can learn to identify them, you might steal a couple in late September out of your compost. But seeds come in all shapes and sizes. And as Sonia mentioned, normally we would not be planting vegetable garden seeds or flower seeds right now. But for this demonstration, we are going to show you another way that you can plant some seeds with your kids to watch how they grow and just for learning purposes because it's really cool to see how they um, pop up. But one thing too, all seed packets have a date. So this one sells, says sell by 2012. 2012. Some seed. So this is lettuce and as Sonia, men Sonia mentioned earlier that lettuce will last a really long time. So these are old seeds. I have had them stored in a freezer. Um, inside a closed container which will keep them for a much longer time than if you just left them sitting in your garage or your kitchen window. Some seeds will last an incredibly long time. Tomato seeds seem to last practically forever. Things like carrots probably won't last as long. If you have some old seed packets and you want to know whether they're any good any or not, you can do a little germination test, which is what I'm going to have these guys do. So, pick a packet of seeds, my friends. What would you like? All right, so you guys have each picked some. We've got some corn and we've got some squash. And what you're gonna do is you're going to, I'm actually gonna take your avocado pit out of there so you can use the steal the water. You're gonna take your paper towel and you're gonna dip it in here and get the paper towel wet. And then you'll open your seed packet and put down 10 seeds on the wet paper towel. So, so you, first you gotta get it wet so that it will hydrate the seeds. And the whole thing, go ahead and get the whole thing wet. That's good, if you pull it out now, you're gonna have to wring it out a little bit. Yep. Can you wring it out a little bit over the jar? Yes. Yeah, there we go, that's perfect, that's great. So lay it down, just on the plastic is fine. Yep, you don't have to spread it all the way out, because. You want it to hold some water, like that? Good, now open your seed packet and count out 10 seeds and lay them out on there. Oh no. Yep, just in a line is great. Oh, you don't have 10 seeds. No, that's not it. I meant there, there aren't that many in there. I think it was the color. So those seeds are dyed to indicate that it's a different squash. Oh. So here you have three different zucchinis on the packet. You have a light green and a yellow zucchini and a dark zucchini, and they've just dyed the seeds to tell them apart. Should I place the rest? You, no, you can put the rest in the packet. We'll wait for Jackson to do his. So the reason we put out 10 seeds is this. It will give you a rough idea of your germination rate. When these seeds germinate, maybe not all of them will. If they all did, all 10 of them, you would have a 100% germination rate. If nine of them sprouted, you would have a 90% germination rate. So if you had five of them germinate, do you know what the per germination rate is? 50. 50, perfect. So that's why you pick out 10 in particular as it lets you tell, it tells you roughly the germination rate of this packet of seeds. That may not matter a whole heck of a lot in your tricolor zucchini, but in your lettuce, there are maybe a hundred seeds in here, and it's useful to know what percentage of those are gonna germinate. So once you have 10 in, you just slide it inside the paper bag. Plastic bag, sorry. Plastic paper. <laughs> Same difference. Well, so the, and the reason for the plastic bag is what you'll do is you get this home and you tape it up to a sunny windowsill. 
and a closed plastic bag in a sunny windowsill is a little tiny greenhouse. And it will germinate these guys. So we'll push the paper towel in and then just seal this closed. And at home, you tape this up to a sunny windowsill. It'll, be, it'll get some warmth and these guys will germinate. It should take, according to this packet, about seven to 10 days for your squash. Can you see how many days it'll take on his corn? Yep. If you look on the side right here, and there it says days to germinate. Seven to 10. Right, so in seven to 10 days, you will, should start seeing some little roots come out from these guys. Well, it'll be a fun little project to do on a snowy day if yep. you have the seeds at home. and. I mean, it doesn't have to be a vegetable seed. It could be any seed that you've collected from your garden from the previous season or, any, you know, whatever. Yeah. Kind of see how it goes. Um, speaking of seeds, here are a couple of things that I just took out of a, a regular household item. These were lemon seeds back in August that I opened up a lemon and it had about 20 seeds. So I popped them in here to see what happened and they're growing. So might be a long time before I can make some iced tea with that. But, and here's a grapefruit. This is about a year old, so it does take a while. Uh, you do need some patience. And as uh, Sonia mentioned, when you, the leaf on a citrus, if you touch it, if you break it, it will smell like the fruit. So, we're gonna try that? Sure, you wanna smell, we've got a broken leaf here. Let's see if you can tell what it smells like. It was broken anyway, so. Mm. Smell yeah. a little grapefruity to you? Yeah, it does. I recognize the smell of cavicchios. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've shown you a few different ways of propagating. We've shown you the stem cutting. We've shown you water cutting. Mm -hmm. We've shown you um, seed propagation. We showed you a little experiment that you can do at home with your kids. So these are all things that you can do to get you through this cold winter. And then when all is said and done, look at those catalogs, get some ideas, enjoy the, the beautiful pictures and have fun gardening. So thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Sonia, for You're coming welcome. here. Thank you, boys, for, for being my little sidekicks and hope you learned something new and maybe one day you'll be like Mr. Green Jeans and be great gardeners too. Boy, I wish. <laughs> so thank you for tuning in, and see you at the next one. See ya. So if you would like more information on the Massachusetts Master Gardener Association, look at this, go to the website uh, that's listed below, and look into the classes. Coming up in February at the Bradley Estate will be the Home Hort Series, which will be a wonderful group of classes for you to take. So earlier, Sonia talked about cuttings. We did some plant propagation with that, and that is called cloning, when you take a piece from another plant. So now we are going to do some forcing with forsythia. And all you have to do is go into your garden, cut a little piece of forsythia, stick it in water, and within a few days or maybe more, you should start to see the yellow blooms. So hope you enjoyed the show today and may the force be with you.